And your next presentation is about GeoServer. And uh, we have two speakers, Andrew and Gabriel. Andrew, he uh, is a GIS project manager at camp to camp and Gabriel is a open source GIS expert developer. And now uh, the talk is yours. Okay, thank you, Diego. Um, I will share my screen. I hope you can see my presentation. Again. Okay, cool. Uh, so hi and welcome to everyone. My name is uh, Adrian. Uh, I'm currently working at Come to Come since uh, 2019 as a project manager. Uh, and this talk uh, tonight, uh, for me uh, in France, um, is going to present you the GeoServer Cloud project. Um, GeoServer Cloud is a GeoServer improvement, mainly built by my colleague Gabriel Roldan here, uh, with the GeoServer core contributor for, for years now. Um, so first of all, I would like to say a word about us at com 2 Um We are a service company founded in 2001. We are currently celebrating our 20th uh, anniversary. Um, and we are working in the field of open source softwares. Uh, we are currently offering innovative solutions for the implementation of uh, GIS, uh, geographic information systems, uh, management software, and uh, IT infrastructure management. Our services include consulting, implementation, training, maintenance, support, and research and development. So now let me talk a little bit about the project that led us to this GeoServer Cloud ID. Uh, since 2019, come to come has been working with l'Agence du Numérique de la Sécurité Civile, uh, a French agency, to develop the GIS components of its Nexus project. Uh, this project consists in the creation of a set of web applications allowing um, civil security actors to receive emergency calls and to qualify these calls. Uh, another application, for example, allows them to, to choose the, the resources that will intervene, agents or vehicle, for example. Um, if you want to know a little bit more about how we use open source software in this Nexus project, uh, feel free to take a look at our other talk, which is going to take part tomorrow. Um, at Comscom, we are quite happy with this Nexus project as the application that we are currently Developing uh, within the project leave an important place to geography, GIS, and mapping tools uh, for classical data visualization, but also as a decision support. Um, as part of the development of this um, GIS application, GIS-based applications, uh, GeoServer quickly established itself as an essential block uh, in order to meet a certain number of the functional needs expressed by our by our customer. So regarding GeoServer, we were able to help our customer to identify its constraints and it express its goals. Uh, its main wish was to get closer to an high availability GeoServer and to make it more resilient. Um, improving the operability of GeoServer was also a goal to reach as the customer's operations teams are not particularly familiar with this solution. Uh, fi facing these two objectives, the customer set a final constraint. Uh, this GeoServer improvement should not have an impact on developments already carried out, uh, as well as those developments to come. Um, so are the main goals that we uh, wanted to reach. And I will now let Gabriel talk about uh, the work he, he has done. Uh, which was able to meet those uh, needs of our customer. Okay, um, so as you probably know, GeoServer is the most wide, widely used 
and deployed um, open source geospatial server in the world. Uh, its versatility is given by some important core services, over 40 uh, supported extensions, and a bigger number of experimental or so-called uh, community modules. Uh, some of you uh, are maybe old enough to remember what it was like when it wasn't there. But, it, but then it appeared, and it was, of course, a monolith. It was a long time ago. Yeah, all of a sudden, we had tools and a thriving community. Uh, something funny to, to look up to, uh, even if you wondered what's really inside it. So the question arises, of what's wrong with it? And the answer is absolutely nothing. As a matter of fact, uh, it's been and will be here for a long time. But that doesn't mean it's obligated to be a perfect fit for all environments, especially uh, when it comes to application instances uh, of how, how application instances are created and deployed uh, like with today's dynamic computer environments and cloud providers. So uh, what is Cloud Native Geo Server? Cloud Native Geo Server is a sibling project to Geo Server, uh, targeting organizations and system administrators in seek of a steady and prescribed way of uh, provisioning Geo Server capabilities in a dynamic computer environment where each business capability can be enabled, configured, dimensioned, and deployed independently. Um, the traditional uh, G-Server monolithic application is certainly feasible of being containerized and clustered both for high availability and capacity planning. In this scenario, though, uh, a cluster of G-Server instances only uses redundancy to accommodate to those requirements. Most of the time, um, server resources need to be over-provisioned to account for the fact that all instances have the same runtime characteristics, including all installed services, and other software components, uh, regardless of which ones are actually used or required. Um, so the cloud native GeoServer project splits these uh, GeoServer geospatial services and APIs into individually deployable components of a microservices architecture. Each service can then be uh, scaled vertically and horizontally as required by their specific performance characteristics, capacity planning, and availability requirements. A gateway service provides location transparency, routing requests to the appropriate microservice, microservice uh, with automatic load balancing, uh, there is no, no noticeable difference from the point of view of the user on whether he's hitting a traditional GeoServer instance or a cloud native deployment. The discovery service on the other on the other side provides location transparency for inter-service communication as uh, you know as, as instances go up and down in a dynamic in a dynamic way. The config service um, abstracts out the location of application configuration settings, allowing, allowing to use YAML files on disk, um, a local or remote Git repository, or Kubernetes config maps to store the actual uh, configuration. The event bus um, lets all services uh, react to configuration services to catalog and config changes uh, in a loosely coupled way. 
and probably most importantly, the catalog configuration subsystem, which is the core of GeoServer, has been improved for higher flexibility by one side, um, by making it easier to implement alternative storage backends, and by the other, by allowing to offload uh, that responsibility to a catalog microservice itself. This opens up the possibility of using several catalog setups, like a shared data directory, uh, a shared Postgres database, or having the actual, the actual catalog back and managed, being managed by the catalog microservice, uh, hence allowing to preserve uh, resources such as database connections as the number of microservices go up and down. Um, as for um, decomposing GeoServer uh, functionalities into microservices, the overall approach is to ensure that each service is responsible responsible for a single business capability, relieving them of unnecessary dependencies and orthogonal concerns as much as possible. So this diagram shows a simplified view of such decomposition of a traditional um, geo server runtime modules at the left into individual microservices at the right naming only the most relevant or heavyweight uh, dependencies and generalized, generalized subsystems. The externalized and centralized uh, configuration um, shows that while the monolithic geo server spreads its full set of configuration options across uh, property files in the data directory environment and system variables, and the web that XML servlet config file. Uh, the Cloud Native Geo Server takes a centralized and externalized configuration approach, integra integrating components in a way where their uh, configuration is stored in a single external file and with the ability to tweak per service specific settings. So uh, I think we can summarize uh, the benefits of GS over cloud into four main axes. Um, there is the aspect of resiliency with each microservice loading only the necessary components into its runtime environment, the possibility of defects in other components or subsystem affecting it is greatly reduced. Um, in terms of scalability and dimensioning, um, a monolith geo server can be scaled up and down, but it requires to assign resources for the worst case scenario without the possibility of, of optimizing um, for the one service under stress. In the microservices approach, on the other hand, allows allows to access to assess um, each service individual resource consumption requirements and dimension to provided server resources accordingly. Uh, hence, resulting in a potential cost reduction in cloud provided bills or infrastructure general infrastructure costs. Uh, in terms of configuration, um, it allows to apply different DevOps uh, practices and to enable individual components, both for the entire cluster and on a per service basis. And in terms of exploit exploitability, uh, GeoServer Cloud is ready to be integrated into almost uh, any cloud infrastructure and ready to enjoy the benefits of um, money, money, monitoring and logging tools provided by these, uh, uh, these you know, external infrastructure providers. Um, so that's but basically I'm handing over to um, Adrian. Yeah, thanks, Gabriel. Um, yeah, the next 
chapter is and then what we are going to how we are going to use uh, this Jira Server Cloud implementation. So there is obviously still some work to be done to industrial industrialize all the improvements uh, we wanted to make to Jira Server. Um, however, this work was I think mature enough to be made public to the community of Jira Server users and contributors. Uh, this is why we have officially handed over the keys of this GeoServer Cloud project to OSGO and GeoServer community through an improvement proposal. Um, GeoServer Cloud is not a rewrite of, of GeoServer. On the contrary, it builds on top of existing GeoServer software components, adapting and extending them, feeding from, and we also contribute back to GeoServer mainline development. So regarding Nexus, we have deployed and tested each of the first version of GeoServer Cloud on Nexus um, since developments were quite completed about a year ago. Um, in our case, we are using Kubernetes as an orchestrator, but we have also tested it with Docker Compose. We are currently using RabbitMQ as, um, as our message-oriented middleware. But I think that GeoServer Cloud has been, has been designed to work with any uh, MQP-based um, message-oriented middleware. And for Nexus, we decided to store the configuration, the GeoServer configuration, into a PostgreSQL database. Um, but those requirements, those specificities of Nexus put aside, um, it's important to note that GeoServer Cloud has been designed to be as agnostic as possible regarding those services, uh, uh, configurations, uh, storage, uh, message oriented middleware, or uh, container orchestrator. Um, to to further facilitate the deployment of GeoServer in Nexus, we even built a Terraform provider. Um, this tool uh, allows us to generate a GeoServer configuration through calls to its REST API. Uh, in, in other words, it gives us the possibility of managing our GeoServer configuration as code, uh, which is particularly useful for versioning this configuration, applying, applying it automatically in a CI CD pipeline. Uh, or whatever. A GeoServer cluster therefore becomes completely automatable and the configuration will be applied without any manual intervention by an, uh, any operator. So it's quite interesting for us. Um, to um, finish this presentation, uh, I would like to talk about tomorrow. Uh, regarding the Nexus project, we hope somehow to go live by the end of the year. This would be the first time GeoServer Cloud would go live as well. Uh, and from there, we hope to attract more users and some new contributors to help us to support this GeoServer Cloud project. Um, actually, we already have identified some technical concerns uh, that we would want to address in the future. Um, for example, GeoServer security subsystem is tightly integrated in, with the catalog and configuration subsystems. We'd like to move this concern up to the gateway service, relieving all services from dealing with these uh, security concerns. We would like to deeply improve the, the integration of GeoServer Cloud into a Kubernetes cluster, um, mainly by using native services provided by Kubernetes tools. Uh, we would like to improve the monitoring and logging around GeoServer Cloud. Uh, it could be uh, the implementation of a Prometheus endpoint, for example. And uh, another example, I think that Joe Webcache would also deserve uh, our attention since it has not been included uh, in our work so far. Anyway, we have plenty of new ideas to improve it, and we hope that Azure uh, Server Cloud is going to be used and uh, supported by. Uh, other project, other user, and other contributors. Thank you for your attention, Diego. We are done. Okay. Hello. I have many questions. I start with 
this question. Do you consider the task the GWeb cache from GeoServer? I think that it should improve performance, mainly in cache generation. Um, yes, the short answer is yes. Um, if you ask me, my uh, my idea would be to have GeoWeb cache in, split into two different microservices. Um, one to just serve app tiles um, from that are already cached, and the separate one to uh, to see the the cache. Um, I'm not entirely um, sure whether the seeding um, part would be a microservice or it could be you know a lambda or something like that. Um, that would be cool. Um, and the other idea that's run in my mind is to uh, is to make to make it a reactive web service uh, so that it will um, uh, require a lot less uh, resources to serve up the same number of of types. So you know. Um, Anytime. I mean, <clears throat> I don't think we we currently have specific funding to do that, but yeah, that that is my 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 current take on it. Okay, thank you. Uh, another question is, which version of your server do you use? You. Is your development size with the Geo Server release schedule? Um, the current version is, or well, I just released release candidate one, and is based on um, Geo Server Master, which is our main branch, uh, with some customization, some some improvements that that couldn't be um, contributed. Uh, to to the mainline GeoServer repository yet, uh, just again, due to a matter of uh, lag time. Um, so we are using we are basically using uh, the main branch. Um, the release schedule is not synchronized with GeoServers. Um, that probably would be a good idea. Uh, and it's something that we might look into as more uh, more funded work is coming to the GeoServer Cloud projects in, in the coming months. Yep. Okay. Uh, can extensions and community models be used with the Cloud Native version as is? No. Um, let me explain a little bit. Uh, what GeoServer, GeoServer is a server-based spring application, and the way it wires up uh, the you know the components to the spring context is by loading everything that's on the class path, uh, that's uh, all the beans that are configuring some in, in, in XML files on the class path named a particular way. Uh, we, for GeoServer Cloud, we decided to take a different approach that will allow us to be selective on which components uh, are loaded to each service's runtime environment. And the reason to do that is that sometimes you need to have some dependencies, um, even though you don't need these services that those dependencies will carry over, for example, uh, at some point, uh, you, you will need to have some classes that are defined in GeoServers, let's say WFS module, but you don't actually need all the WFS stuff running inside it. So the, the approach is to, uh, we've implemented a way to use mixed uh, Spring XML and Java configuration files 
we the way to selectively filter out what you, what you want to load into the runtime environment. Um, and that allow, allows us to do that and to uh, and to improve or you know better define the configuration of the the of the runtime environment as in, in, in these externalized configuration files that we talked about earlier. Uh, that means that you, you, when you integrate a, an extension in, in Geo Server Cloud, we need to uh, create a specific module for that and, and to define some configuration properties for it so that you can enable or disable it based on configuration uh, instead of you know loading everything that's that's in the class path. So a component may be on the class path, but you have control on whether you are going to load it or not through through the externalized configuration file. Thank you. Um, another question is what is the recommended HA architecture for the backend database like Postgres. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> like in, I mean, there is one thing that's that's for sure um, that when you set up a geospatial server, it doesn't matter, you know, to how many instances it could scale out uh, how how big your software components could be uh, if you cannot scale your data backend or you you know because in the end the the purpose is to serve and work with geospatial data so uh, but that is actually a more general and orthogonal concern to the ability of uh, of having the GeoServer's business, business capabilities split out into individual components. Um, so data management, totally separate concept. OK. Thank you. And the last one is, how do you get access to this presentation slides? Uh, ask Adrian. <laughs> um, uh, yes, that's a good question. I think that the simpler way is to um, just send me an email and I can share it. Uh, uh, I, I think that we'll maybe publish some blog post about uh, the first 4G event and we're, I think that you will be able to find those slides uh, in this blog post uh, on the Come to Comp website. Okay. Uh, can you put your contact in the chat in the very last, please? Yes, yeah, for sure. Okay. Thank a lot for your presentation. It's a wow. very exciting sub subject. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sounds great. Thank you, Diego. Bye, all. Bye bye.